welcome to Student One, Episode Four. I'm your host Terry Shao, and um, here we are today. We're going to do something really weird. Um, the place where I've never been to in my life, the darkest corner of the wide world. Or oh, maybe we'll find light in the darkest corner. So what we have today is yes, box wine, box wine, box wine. For anybody who asks for box wine or cheap wine review, this is for you. So. Box wine is something really interesting in catching up, catching up in the States in the last 5-6 years but they have been around in Europe, Australia, New Zealand for quite a long time like 10 plus, 10 plus 15 years. Uh, the good thing about box wine is uh, look at all these big boxes. No 3 liter boxes which means uh, each box has about 4 bottles of your regular size wine. And they all cost about, this is 14 and this here is uh, $16, this here is uh, $17 so they're about 4 or $5 per bottle of wine. That's pretty damn good considering that uh, they're all just, you know, wine. So let's see how we compare to uh, wine around the world. Um, before we start, uh, if you want me to get a shout out or something, give me, leave your comment on there. Leave your comment down in down the YouTube and definitely send me an email if you want me to give a shout out, if your name or whatever. Hey, let me know. Alright, let's get started with a box wine. Oh, yes, before that. Tomorrow, we're playing Nebraska, Michigan State University, Spartans. Yes, the Spartans are taking on the ne Nebraska Corn Huskler. And I bet you, we are going to win. Mark my word. At Spartan Stadium, this is going to be it. We are going to kick your ass. Alright. First one we got is from Italy, actually. So one of the European presentation. We, it's a blend of 80% uh, Gaganega and 20% Pinot Grigio. Now, we can see the Garganega because the Garganega is written in white and it was a white background so you can't see it, they don't want you to see it because Garganega is a really cheap grape in a suave area that used to make a uh, very light uh, light body white wine in a suave area while Pinot Grigio, they tried to sell you because the Pinot Grigio is written in black on a black background so I almost got cheated there anyway, it's 12% alcohol content and uh, it's by what's called Duca del Fascino Gaganega Pinot Grigio 2011. Let's see how it goes. Alright, give it a swirl. Now, one thing that's striking me, unlike other Pinot Grigio or Gaganega or Suave wine, is the, uh, the aromas is really weak on the nose. I have to get my nose all the way in the glass to actually smell it really uh, clear. This has a, just like the Pinot Grigio, traditional Pinot Grigio Valley, the, the bit of green cut grass, so some bit of unripeness, but it's a little bit of olive, and then good amount of uh, lots and lots of yeah green apple peels, green apple, and even apple ciders and apple vinegar. I don't know, so it smells pretty good. There's a bit of that fake cheap juice component. A bit of that um, sugary juice component on there. But the wine is dry though. Just, uh, um, maybe just a little off dry. The acidity is being contained really well. It's not jumping out there attacking my mouth with acidity unlike a lot of Pinot Grigio out there. The fruitiness is not very strong but what, what just takes me aback is definitely the finish. The finish is really really short kind of uh, interesting, just, just a Pinot Grigio, uh, just a Pinot Grigio Gaganega I find any with that any day. And uh, well maybe it's just me but it has a bit of fishiness on the, on the finish which is kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next bottle. Um, so before that, the advantage of a box one, obviously, is that it's cheap. Uh, but on the other hand, environmentally speaking, they're much friendlier than bottles because a glass bottle weighs so much more compared to these boxes. These are made of um, paper. Especially this guy is Bota box, so we're gonna have that right now. The Chardonnay is what they so called um, made of synthetic fiber, made of fiber from processed materials. So we'll see how go how well it goes. Uh, this is your Bota box. 2011 3 liter Chardonnay 
from California, potentially. Now, these box one people, they all claim, all three box one people, they claim that their wine will last fresh and flavor will be undulterated in three, six months, I mean, sorry, three, six weeks of time. So what I mean by that is uh, most of your, most of your wine out there, especially your white wine or red wine, um, especially white wine, yeah, delicate white wine. You open it up and after a few days, it changes flavor completely. Even if you try to keep it in the fridge, you try to spray it down with those uh, nitrogen spray. But these boxes, they promise, yes, they promise that oxidation will be minimized and flavor will be unchanged. So maybe five weeks later, we'll see you again with these boxes. So, all right, Chardonnay, uh, 2011 Chardonnay, 12, 13% alcohol. Uh, this one has been consistently scoring 83 points from both wine associates and wine spectator. That's interesting, after the last five years. So last five vintage, 83 points for, from wine spectator and wine associates. The aroma is much, much stronger than the, uh, the Pinot Grigio here. The, uh, well, more cigar in one. So, there's a strong flavor of pineapple, pear, pineapple, pear, really nice uh, pineapple, pear, and lemon zest. But underneath that layer of sweetness and uh, pineapple and pear, you get this herbaceousness that just seems to come out from, uh, you know, grapes that are not very ripe or grapes that are not just, just not very nice grapes. Once again, finish very really short. Finish very, really, very really short. It just, it's a non oak, non oak Chardonnay that's live and lively, and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not blowing, but it's not blowing me off either. I mean, you can find these one everywhere around the, around your sugar market or whatever, the Costco. Yeah, they got everywhere. So, why don't why you try them? What's stopping you from trying them? Next one up, next one up is your big house red. Your big house red, yes, uh, from California again. This is a 2011, 2010, see. This is a 2011, huh, this is a 2011 big house red. And I'll tell you what, when I look at the information, I was really, really shocked to see all this thing going on around. So, um, he has 27% of Petit Chirac, 14% of Chirac, 8.6 Montepulciano, 8.2 Barbera, 6.4 Nero, Nero Diavallo, 6.1 Tempranino, 3.3 Malbec, and there's all sorts of like 20 other grapes that I have no idea of. So it's it's like one that's made of all the leftover grapes from their wine making process, I imagine. 13% alcohol, uh, $17. And they say being uh, oak, but the oak they involve are neutral oak. So what I think is neutral oak, uh, three and four year used oak, probably neutral oak. The more interesting enough, the last seven years, they've been scoring range about 80 to 85 point score from wine associates. The 2004 vintage of this actually got a 90 points from wine enthusiasts, and that's very, very a big boosting for them. So let's see how this goes. Uh, the winemaker here is uh, Jorge Hadan. So, Big House Red, California 2011. Once again, this is coming out of very explosive fruit, it's just very explosive. Lots and lots of big fruits on there. There's, there's a fruit farming about this, uh, how is this? this blackberry, this blackberry, this, this raspberry, this plum, there is a uh, currant, not a lot of currant, actually. And there's, there's a fakeness, there's a sweet fakeness, like Skittles, you know, those fake juice component that you can find in a lot of fake stuff. Like for example, flavoring agent, that's what I'm talking about, yes. This is not bad, I'm huh? it. It's slightly sweet though, all these wines, yes, all these wines have a slight, just a slight bit of sweetness in them. But this is a pretty big one. I mean, this one will go head to head with all your yellowtail, your rosemont, your uh, yeah, your little penguin, your all your cheap Australian wine, your like cheap Australian wine, and definitely beating up all the cheap American wine out there. I mean, put.
putting this into value is a very, very good value. Really, really interesting one. And why do I keep mentioning Australia? I mean, all these one, all these uh, boxes were, I think, originally started from England, where they uh, import Australian juice and then they box it in this kind of style and by the big supermarket chain. And that was a big breakthrough for them 20 years ago. And now it's finally catching on in the States. But Americans, come on. This is a great way to go, considering the environmental friendliness and also the cheapness of wine. Not bad. Move on. All right. The last one we have is another another red one from California. This time is the uh, Black Box California Chardonnay uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Black Box California Cabernet Sauvignon. It's uh, six point five dollars, six dollars ish. The wine is eighty seven points, thirteen five alcohol. The lowest points it ever gotten by from wine enthusiasts was eighty four points in the last five years. So this is really supposed to be a killer. We'll see how it goes. And I can't find any information on the oak treatment or any kind of wood involved at all. But we'll see if it tastes any oak at all. Let me give it a good rinse. Uh, rinse the rinse. All right, get it on your. Alright, do this. Now this one just strikes me. There's a lot of rubber component, yeah. Not only like those synthetic rubber. And then there's a bit of black pepper, quite a bit of black pepper as well before the fruit comes out. It's, it's first the rubber and the black pepper. Then underneath that you got some cherry and uh, and your black currant. Now, aside from the synthetic-ness of the flavor, uh, nose, it, the juice doesn't feel that, that fake, you know. So I guess that's good news, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, all right, give it a whirl. Wow, this is not bad. The longest finish on the bunch. This one has one, one of the longest finish on all, I mean, this one, the black box. Yeah, out of all four of them, this one has the longest finish. Even though the finish is kind of harsh with the, with the acidity coming out uh, as one of the dominant flavor and also your fruit being kind of being kept in check. But the, the, the black pepper component and also the uh, the cherry component is really coming out nicely and it's quite quite it's quite good. But seriously though, why the synthetic flavor on the nose? Why the robbery flavor on the nose? I don't get it. Maybe it's because of the package. I don't know. Alright, so come on people, what's stopping you from trying box one? Don't let your don't let your prejudice get to you, okay? I mean, when I'm buying these wines at Myers and working out of Myers, I feel really ashamed of myself ever ever bought of these wines before. But hey, after trying them, I have to tell you all, they're really interesting. And they can present good value. So let's give you the points on these guys. Uh, let's give you the points. For the first one, we have the lowest point of them all. Let's start with that actually. The lowest point of them all is your Bota Box Chardonnay. I give it 80 modest, 82 points, Bota Box Chardonnay. It just doesn't feel very really good. Yeah, overall speaking. Even, yeah, and I think the 83 points one spectator for the last five years is justified. Uh, it just feels very really cheap. I'll give it 83 points just being a wine <laughs> instead of being anything fake. Would I buy this? No. Big no. And then we have a uh, second lowest score here, it's third place. It's your Duca del Fisano uh, Garganepo Pinot Grigio. I really like how they use the Garganepo aromatics to balance out with the, uh, the Pinot Grigio sour uh, city. But the grape in the Pinot Grigio is definitely not ripe. The Garganepo is probably ripe, but I couldn't taste the uh, ripeness at all. And it's not a bad effort. 12% um, alcohol, it's really not a bad effort. You can take this to a picnic any day. And it's not offensive. I mean, both of these wines, the Botar and Gangan Apple, will definitely stand head to head with their $10, $8 wine. And these are all cheaper by per bottle wise. So why not? Give it a try. Alright. The second place of today's wine challenge is your Big House Red Wine. Big House Red Wine is 84 points. 84 point big house real one, it's respectable marks. I really like how the fruit jumps out on you on the nose. This has really good fruit components. And 
it's generally speaking just not a bad wine. Uh, yeah, but the finish is really short. And this wine actually reminds me of another one by Wash Queen Washington State. It's called the uh, Alba Cadabra. Yeah, the reason why it's called Alba Cadabra is because they use all the leftover grapes from all their wine making process to make another wine. And so it's kind of like making magic. So all these different grape variety going to this wine makes me kind of feel like they're using that kind of method, which is a great way to recycle out all the used grape you don't want. Um, all right, uh, last wine of the bunch was the uh, highest score of all of these wine. It is your Black Box. Black Box Cabernet around California. It is coming from uh, 86 points. Now 86, 7 point wine enthusiast, wine, wine, wine spectator might be a little too high for me. Hey, who knows man, this is actually not bad. Uh, I really like the component of the black pepper dish going on in this wine. It goes really well with any kind of uh, light barbecue or any kind of uh, light meat. And the cherry in this some is run nice as well. I just couldn't figure out, I just couldn't figure out where the synthetic component is coming from. So hey, you and me, we're changing the wine world with people like this. We gotta keep drinking out different wine, don't let your prejudice get to you and enjoy life, try different things. Let me know how you like it. Enjoy, cheers.